we're going to start out with a 70, 1760 Daiichi hook, size 4 with a Vivas 50 denier thread. And this is going to be just a general quick sinking stone. It's going to be the lead fly, um, or you could use it as a middle fly in a uh, check nymph style rig if you wanted to go that route. So I'm just going to start by moving the bead to the back of the hook and trimming the thread. And that's because we're going to put some antennas up front and we're going to hide them under the bead first off. <clears throat> so for our antenna we're going to be using Life Flex and Olive. And I just half those over the thread and tie both sides in and then we'll slide the bead over. Now you can see I take pretty deep wraps in there and that's just to make sure that they're secured and that the fly will be, you know, long lasting. So once they're both up front, I wrap them quite a bit and I whip finish. Now I whip finish back behind where the bead's gonna be, again, just to have a continuous filament holding my fly together. I feel that that makes for uh, real solid durability. We slide the bead back over and I'll trim the antenna in one shot together so they're the same length. So once we restart our thread, we're gonna wrap deep into the bend of the hook here. And this pattern can be morphed into a golden stone, little black winter stones, squalas, uh, salmon flies, pretty much anything uh, that you really want to, you know, fish f with. You know, it's a uh, it's a really easily adaptable pattern. So again, same trick, life flex doubled over the thread and folded back to hold it in place. I want to keep it pretty minimal on the back of the fly here. Um, and that's just because we're going to be running a biop body. Trim them off. I like to trim the tail shorter than the antennas up front. It looks more natural to me. So this is a, uh, we're going to pull some uh, biots off of this goose shoulder here. I like to get nice long ones. This one happens to be mahogany. It's a color I like for doing salmon fly nymphs. You could also use browns, blacks um, for salmon flies as well. Never hurts to change it up. So you can see I tie it in tip first, and I'm going to take wraps backwards right up to where we tied in the tail. And then I'm going to simply wrap forward. Um, I'm wrapping with the curvature up, and I'm using a pair of hackle pliers. They're just little spring-loaded jobs, and I never really have too many problems with them. So you'll see there's a rib side that I'm working on trying to get back to the back of the fly. That's so we can have progressive overlap. And you'll see that start to stand up here. And perfection is cool, but it's not, it's not going to stop you from catching fish. So once we wrap through our first biot, we'll go ahead and uh, unwrap a few, and we'll catch it and pin it in there. I just wrap it down for security purposes. We'll select another biot, same length. And again, we're having that raised rib section of the biot pointed towards the back. You can see when I fold it over, it just instantly stands up. So we're going to start increasing the segmentation here just a touch, hopefully. And uh, so it creates a really cool profile. The reason I like to keep the back so slim and such a big tungsten bead is... I want this fly to get down. I want it to be able to fish deeper, fast moving water more efficiently. We're gonna throw in some fusion dub and crusty nail, create a dubbing bump. And the, this, this nymph is actually a spin off of a soft tackle that I did, I call it the bash, which would just be this step and a soft tackle and done. So I've kind of morphed this into a nymph version. Uh, some thin skin or pheno skin and a brown, mottled brown, whatever you guys have. And that's going to go right on the top there. And that's going to create our, our wing case. You can trim a nice V in it and uh, may help you uh, tie that sucker in.
Next up is just a partridge. I like to blend a little naturals in with the synthetics. So this cut fly is kind of a 50-50 blend there. Um, soft tackles have always had a special place in my heart. I feel they're really suggestive and even when nymphed do really, really well to uh, catch kind of spooky or wary trout. So right now I'm just prepping the feather, feather combing everything backwards. and tying it in by the tip. Now I double it over just for security purposes. You know, like I said, I want these flies to be durable. We just stroke all those fibers backwards, creating a nice collar. And that's kind of the play on the soft tackle there. And if anybody's left out or left push forward, once we get it secured, we can just move them back, wrap them in place, and they'll be good to go. Perfection at this point is not uber critical. So next up I blend a little fusion dub with some uh, trilobal just to thin out the flash a bit. We have a flash spot on the back and I do about a 50-50 mix on this and I just do a hand mix instead of using like a any other you know dubbing mixer like the hairline make your own dubbing machine. That's for a little bit larger batches. So I'll just show you a hand mix here. We're going to throw this in a dubbing loop. Dubbing loops are really fun and efficient ways to create incredibly buggy looking flies. So get the ends nice and tight, throw in your dubbing twister of choice and uh, spin away. You always want to make sure that your dubbing is aligned um, as best as possible so it looks even inside of the loop and the uh, individual fibers spread out just a little bit better. The cool thing about the 50D also is that you can spin incredibly tight little dubbing loops and have very minimal core growth. You know, you're not going to have a big thick core. Make sure to brush out your dubbing loops. There's going to be loose materials and fibers in there. And you want those to come out now rather than on the river so you know what your fly is going to look like at the end. You can trim it into a length that you want, you can pre-trim your dubbing before too. So we pull the hackle back and start palmering this uh, dubbing brush that we've made or dubbing loop. It's pretty much just a glorified brush. <clears throat> and it gets really, really wonky. You can see I left the thread in the middle. That's because I'm going to throw some legs in there. And again, we're going to be using that life flex and olive All I do is go in at the 9 and 3 o'clock positions and I half the, the rubber legs and I'll use the rest of the dubbing loop to split them and get them to flare properly. But that way they're going to get sucked in nice and tight to the fly. I leave the legs long. I want to be able to have something to grab onto and work through. And you can see we get a really good split. So that soft tackle is actually acting as like the traditional third set of legs there, if you would. Um, seems to work out really well for me. I'll give a few wraps around the head, spin it around. Now we're back to the bobbin. And we're just finishing and tying that in really well. You see I keep wrapping the thread around just to uh, make sure that that dubbing loop is connected perfectly. So right now we're going to trim a pathway that's going to be what we pull the wing case with. You want to avoid 
your hackles because we're just going to pull those to the side as we pull this wing case. And once I get one secure wrap, I feel pretty good with a whip finish at this point and with the next steps that the fly is going to stay where I need it to be and be incredibly durable. So I trim off right behind the bead. You can use your scissors or a razor blade works really well. And I like to press everything down out of the way so that wing case can be worked on. And we'll trim a path on the belly. Again, just creating less bulk, but I wanted the uh, solidity of a big dubbing brush in there. give the legs a trim too. I cut them all at the same time so they look even and proper. So we're going to create a hot spot wing case and I'm going to use pumpkin orange UV pigment mixed with some thick in our mixing cup and this is accomplished by using uh, say if you have like a quarter size of UV resin I put like the tips of my scissors in. You can over mix it so be careful. So I'm going to use my bodkin to create this wing case of this sparkly orange pigmented resin. I just take my time. It's the great thing here is there's not really a lot of opportunity for uh, mess ups and or um, destruction like there is with normal epoxies. So once I have the wing case kind of where I want it, I can manipulate, move, try to get bubbles out if there are any. Um, from the mixing process and create this really cool hot spot wing case. I zap it with the light and you know between 7 to 15 seconds depending on the light source that resin is going to be completely cured. Now last up I'm going to take some of our fluorescing fly finish and we'll do a top shot over the body and now this is going to help to protect and stabilize those biots as well as make that wing case pop just even more. Um, so essentially we're really just building some fiberglass flies once you uh, completely coat with the resin system. It increases durability and this fly is going to stand up till you uh, snag it in a tree if you will. And at this point it's pretty much time to fish. Here's a spin. You can see it's nice big buggy pattern. Decent amount of profile. It's going to get down quick and uh, be very suggestive. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.